one of the other carcinogens we haven't really discussed, which is essentially the second most prevalent um, environmental trigger of cancer after smoking is obesity. Um, and we can certainly debate whether it's obesity per se, which I don't think it is. In other words, I don't think it's adiposity. Uh, I think it is inflammation and growth factors that come with obesity, namely insulin, uh, probably IGF-1, uh, not to mention the inflammation that is part and parcel with that, which I assume is in some way impairing the uh, immune system and, and, and things of that nature. So um, that's another example where you have a lot of these cancers. Let's think of those top five, breast, prostate, pancreatic are clearly linked. Colorectal as well. I'm not sure about lung. So lung might not be as related to obesity as the other four. But uh, there are also many other you know cancers that fall outside of the top five lethal where, where we do tend to see this relationship. Uh, to my last count, I think there were about 25, 26, maybe 27 cancers that have a pretty tight relationship to that. So you know, yep. that's not only something that's increasing uh, in terms of societal prevalence, um, but you might argue that that also takes a while to, to sort of yeah. kick in. Yeah, so that's, yeah, totally right. Um, yeah, thank you for inserting that because it really is, you know, it's, it's so easy to think about um, ultraviolet radiation and skin cancers, so easy to think about smoking. Uh, I mean, now that we understand, you know, when we sequence, uh, you know, an individual cell or a population of cancer cells, um, sequence their genome, and we can now see the kind of the footprint, if you will, the damage um, that those types of carcinogens uh, induce. Obesity is unquestionably, you know, like another one really, you know, that, that third highest ranking um, quote unquote carcinogen, but the way it does it is, is certainly more complicated. And, and it is, as you're saying, sort of it's systemic. Um, you know, I really do latch on to that literature that you alluded to um, regarding sort of insulin signaling, um, you know, kind of like sort of the, the body's metabolic response um, to, ob to obesity. Um, I mean, even you can study this just in like a fed versus fasted state, like in kind of a short term um, setting. But, but when you're, you know, someone um, is obese, basically they, there are metabolic, you know, adaptations, if you will, that the body sort of attempts to make. And I would draw the analogy to, you know, where we started with um, the hormone receptor, uh, you know, driven cancers, so you know, breast and, and prostate. Um, it's, you know, it's a different um, phenomenon to a degree, but basically, you know, insulin growth factor, IGF, you alluded to, and then um, its receptors on cells, which are sort of ubiquitous uh, on all cell types, and certainly the, the, you know, the cell types that, um, for which we've got epidemiologic evidence that uh, those cancers are more common um, in the uh, obese um, population. Basically, what you know, what you can say from laboratory data is that you know the the signaling that happens through insulin signaling in cells, um, it's it's tightly tied uh, to what we have you know kind of talked about already, which is that sort of growth factor receptor you know um, pathway. I mean, it, it really it is ultimately part of that you know sort of same biology. There's a there's a a pathway that you know, that connects those surface receptors into cells. Um, that then regulate um, sort of how the mitochondria act as sort of the you know the, the power stations, if you in, uh, will, inside of cells. Um, so the so-called PI3 kinase pathway, um, you know, well described as being a driver in cancer. Um, that pathway is basically being chronically driven um, in that setting of high ins high insulin levels, high uh, insulin growth factor uh, circulating levels. Um, you know, so exactly, you know, what threshold level um, poses risk and over what period of time, like, you know, those, um, I would say those dots haven't been fully connected, but the epidemiology is undeniable. And I would say the laboratory data that supports, you know, that connection is also undeniable. So I think there's, you know, there's, there's something about, you know, that, that kind of pushing, that driving. It's, I mean, like chronic inflammation, as you cited, which itself, by the way, of course, is a direct uh, causal factor for certain cancers. Um, yeah, so like an like a, a organ site or a tissue site where there's chronic inflammation, um, well described that cancers can arise in that, uh, in that setting. It's a similar phenomenon, basically. They kind of keep whipping the horse, if you will, in a way, and, and, and cells will, you know, ultimately, um, through genetic alteration still, um, basically, you know, respond, uh, you know, to that environmental stress um, and, and, and cancers ensue. Thank you.